Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. It is Answer Monday. So are you totally ready for this one? Because I am. So I will be leaving the answers down in the description box below along with my email address. So if you have any questions about how I got the answers or whatever, you can shoot me an email, you can comment below, whatever, okay? Uh, just let me know what your thoughts are. If this is in line with something that is helpful, let me know as well. Um, because I can also switch it up for next quiz Friday. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, number one, the patient is six months status post C6 to C7 ACDF. And the patient is healing nicely. I got Z09, which is the encounter for follow up, and Z98.1, which is arthrodesis status. So I hope that you had looked up, if you didn't know what ACDF stood for, it is anterior cervical discectomy and fusion, okay? So if you're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, well, this is a follow-up, um, why wouldn't I just put, you know, whatever the surgery was or whatever the case may be? Anytime you're looking at um, fusion, that means arthrodesis because Technically, arthrodesis is a fusion, is a cervical immobilization of a joint by fusion of adjacent bones. And literally, the ACDF is telling you that it is an, an, that it is an anterior cervical discectomy and fusion. So immediately, that should automatically put in your mind this patient had an arthrodesis. Okay, so something to keep in mind. And that arthrodesis status is what you would put with that um, follow-up, the Z09, okay? So, number two, the patient has a malignant neoplasm of the right kidney. They had a renal biopsy done by percutaneous, done percutaneous by trocar, okay? I got C64.1 for the diagnosis and 50200 with an RT modifier for the uh, procedure code. Now, uh, whenever you have that particular surgery, it is, um, it is, there's different codes for different methods. So be sure to pay attention to the documentation and see that you're looking at it because there's a, a few entries in where that, that particular procedure code is. So be sure to look at that whenever you are selecting your codes, so that way you can be selecting the correct code, okay? Um, the next one is number three. The patient has congenital ureteral cell orthotopic. A ureteroplasty was performed. I got Q62.31 and 50700. So how did I get that Q code? Because immediately, whenever it tells you congenital you're automatically going to look for those q codes because that's it's not um it is an organic condition but it didn't just acquire it didn't just develop this is something that the patient was born with so anytime you're looking at those kinds of things you're looking for those q codes so the next one is the same patient is follow up six weeks status post surgery what is the aftercare and procedure code so the aftercare code would be Z48.816, which is aftercare for genitourinary because they did the surgery um, for the ureteroplasty, okay? Uh, and then the procedure code would be 99024 because this patient is still in the global period. That ureteroplasty is a major 90-day global surgery, okay? So whenever you have those major surgeries, you have to pay attention to how far along in their recover in their uh, follow up are they okay? And in this instance, um, it is six weeks status post. All right, number five, uh, a laparoscopic ureteral lithotomy was performed for the patient's calculus of the ureter. I got N two zero point one and five zero nine four five for the procedure. Okay, number six. The patient has a bladder stone, a cystolithotomy for removal of the stone was performed without vesicle neck resection. I got N21.0 and 51050. Now, 
why didn't I say that this was a calculus, right? A bladder calculus, because in, in the book, you're going to be looking for calculus, not stone, okay? So when you're looking at the diagnosis, always look up calculus. Whenever you see stone, you got to automatically think, okay, I'm looking for a calculus in the book because sometimes providers are not going to use the exact words that are in the book. So you, I mean, or they're going to document something that is not technically in the book, but as long as the word is the same, which calculus and stone is the same word. Okay. Um, arthrodesis, you know, we know that we're, we're talking about a fusion. Okay. So those are things that you have to think about. It is very important to expand your vocabulary when it comes to learning different words and what do these different words mean. And if something is hanging you up, like you're getting stuck or something like that, it's totally fine. Because in the beginning, I didn't know what a fusion was. I didn't know what arthrodesis meant. I didn't know any of that. It takes time. So if you're still learning, it's okay. You will get it. Uh, but you just have to devote time to learning it. And and the wonderful thing about Google or any other search engine is that results are pretty instant where you can find something. Sometimes you may have to poke around a little bit, but it's all right. You will eventually find what you're looking for. But that's something to remember. And this is why I was telling you guys I was going to try to trip you up. So... <laughs> But yes, that was the answer to that one. Moving right along, number seven, the patient has tuberculosis of the prostate. An incisional biopsy was performed on the prostate. I got A, 18.14 for the tuberculosis of the prostate and 55705 for the procedure. Okay. Uh, again, make sure that you understand what method did they use to approach for the biopsy, whether it was needle biopsy, like aspiration type biopsy, or it was incisional, okay? Something to remember. Number eight, the patient has a congenital prolapse of the urethra. A plastic repair of the urethro, urethro cell was performed. I got Q64.71 for the congenital prolapse and 57230 for the procedure code. Again, whenever you see congenital, you're looking for a Q code, okay? Um, number nine, a vesiculotomy was performed for hematospermia. I got R36.1 for the hematospermia and 55600 for the vesiculotomy, okay? Now, number 10, this is the one I've been excited about. So. Rhinocytositis that is both chronic, that is chronic and hyperplastic. I got J32.9. Now, how did I get to this? Okay, so you'll notice that you could not find rhinocytositis. There is no entry in the index for rhinocytositis. Rhinocytis, sinusitis, okay? When that happens, when you see that, like, oh crap, I cannot find it under rhinocytositis. I cannot find it, of course, under chronic or hyperplastic. You know, you're not going to be able to find it underneath those, okay? But what you will be able to find is uh, rhino has to deal with the nose, okay? So remember that. Rhino deals with the nose. So when you take that off, right, when you take the rhino part off because it's not helping you to find it in the book, but it still has to do with sinusitis. We know that... Um, the nose has sinusitis when you're breaking it down so that you can understand, right? The nose has sinusitis. So we're looking for sinusitis now. Okay. So when you start looking under sinusitis, the entry will tell you, um, you'll see accessory, chronic, hyperplastic, nasal, non-purulent, non and purulent. So with that in mind, that is how you're going to be able to locate your code because now we're saying the same thing. Rhino and nasal are, we're saying the same thing. It's, it is literally the same thing. So that is how I was able to come up with that code, that J32.9. Again, trying to change it up so that way you guys are not just seeing like textbook, like what you would see like from a textbook. This is going to be like 
if you're in real life, once you get into the real world of coding and they start throwing all kinds of things at you, you guys are going to be prepared because even though my exercises are not official, I am a freaking freaking nerd when it comes to this medical coding stuff. I will admit it. I don't care. You know, it is my passion. It's my joy. I love doing it. And, um, you know, I just like to do it. But at the same time, I like to pass on what I know so that other people can be prepared as well. Because if you're not thinking outside the box, if you're not thinking outside of what the book tells you, and you're not, you know, you're not trying to study any other way, you're not going to be as prepared when you get out there and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? This way, you guys can be prepared with just these, you know. So this way, just sort of getting you in that mindset of thinking of things differently. Getting a different approach of looking at documentation, okay. But still means the same thing, okay. Because people... Providers will say things differently and once you get around those providers, you will understand what I'm saying because each one of them communicates in their own way. Sometimes I will literally sit there and like as I'm working on a particular provider, like I like to spend sometimes like a whole morning with one provider because uh, like in working on their encounters because when I do that, I'm able to like concentrate and they have their own way of doing things so I can get through it much more quicker rather than just jump from provider to provider. So this allows me to knock out a bunch of their encounters because I can think like as they are thinking. And I like when they when they when they get very conversationally in these notes, you know, like um because a lot of them are using like uh, they'll, they'll use a, the the speakware, you know, or um, like Dragon, you know, um, like basically they're talking, it'll type it for them. And so it's funny because they're they're having this conversation and you're able to read what's going on. And that's what I like. I like reading those conversations about what is happening with this patient? What are they doing for this patient? And it is a lot easier for them when they are using uh, that kind of uh, dictation software. That's what I meant to say, dictation software. So yeah, I mean, it gets interesting. <laughs> Anyway, uh, this is going to be a very busy week during the week um, because next week I have my class and uh, I'm very excited about that. And then um, this weekend I have like a lot of plans already. I, the week is not even here. The weekend is not even here and, and I'm already, it's already all planned out. So anyway, I hope you guys had a good Monday. Um, let me know if you have any other questions because Q&A Tuesday is in full effect. So let me know, and I will throw them on tomorrow's Q&A Tuesday. <laughs> so if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. All right, I will see you all on the next video. Bye.